Welcome students for another video lecture on the basics of spectroscopy. So we are trying to understand what spectroscopy is, how spectroscopy works and what are the different uh, principles behind spectroscopy and how we tend to use it in forensic science. So we will start off by understanding a few simple things. So we all know what this is. This is a spectrum. So white light passing into a thick piece of glass with a high refractive index. This is a prism, glass prism. White light gets separated into its component wavelengths, which gives you the WIBGR or the common, commonly we call it the spectrum. And spectroscopy also gets its name from this spectrum that is formed from this white light. So what happens here? in a spectrum. So spectrum, when we speak about spectrum, it talks of white light's interaction with glass. White light hitting glass, getting separated into its component wavelengths, giving you the spectrum. What if white light is going to get separated? We study this same kind of a scenario just replace this white light to any other electromagnetic radiation. Try to identify what happens if UV light hits the spectrum. What if only red light hits the spectrum? What if any other X-ray or something hits the spectrum? What if you're going to remove this uh, prism here, prism from out of here and use something else, say a stone or a glass piece or from a crime, crime exhibit what happens now? So spectroscopy basically studies how electromagnetic radiation, it may not be only white light, it can be any other electromagnetic radiation that I just now listed, how they interact with matter. That is, how, that is what spectroscopy studies and we're going to use it for our advantage. So spectrum is basically white light's interaction with glass. Spectroscopy is the study of how different other different electromagnetic radiation can interact with matter and what kind of effects they produce. Based on that, we're going to use it to identify or study something in forensic science. In forensic science, we make use of the study of spectroscopy a lot. We have UV bis uh, spectroscopy, spectrophotometry. We have mass spectroscopy. We, uh, we will be studying about atomic spectroscopies. We'll be studying infrared spectroscopy. There are multiple types of spectroscopy that we use in forensic science. And the basic idea is this spectroscopy studies how electromagnetic radiation interacts with different matter. And we make use of this study to understand the different matter based on the interaction. So spectroscopy already documents what is going to happen with infrared light, for example, infrared radiation hitting glass, what happens? Spectroscopy has already documented it. So now we're going to study different matter based on the interaction in forensic science. Supposing you place a gem in the middle of white light, what is the characteristic feature going to be? We use this kind of a study in forensic gemology. So spectroscopy already documents what are the different interactions that happen when different electromagnetic radiation hits matter. We're going to use this knowledge to identify what is this matter by using electromagnetic radiation on different samples. So one simple example is our forensic gemology. We'll try to make it a little more uh, uh, one step ahead where we talk about the, the most common simple spectroscopy instrument which is called the handheld spectroscope. It comes in two models. This is a single uh, tube uh, spectroscope. This is a double tube spectroscope. This basically has a wavelength adjuster. So you can adjust from which wavelength to which wavelength you want to study. Here you can't do that. That's the only difference. But otherwise it works the same way. Basically these two, two tubes that you're seeing here is a set of prisms and lens. So it's basically going to work like what happened with your spectrum in your previous slide. Okay. So it's a tube which has a set of prisms and lens. You're going to place a sample in front and look through this tube. So without the sample, if you're going to look through white light, what are you going to get? You're going to get exactly this. 
you're going to get the spectrum simple spectrum of the white light that we've already seen under the handheld spectroscope this is a simple uh, common uh, cheap simple efficient spectroscope that we can carry along where do we use it we commonly use it in gemology so supposing you're going to hold a simple spectroscope to white light you're going to get a spectrum right now if you're going to place a gem in the middle of the white light and your spectroscope or the prism so white light hits your glass or gemstone passes through the prism and reaches your eye without the gem you saw a spectrum with gr spectrum but now that the gem is placed there is going to be some extra interaction that is not present when just white light is separated and these interactions can be absorbance can be transmittance can be scattering can be refraction can be multiple different interactions that are possible in this case if you can see a gem placed in front of your spectroscope and white light passing through that gem you're getting absorbance in certain points of the spectrum some of the wavelengths of white light we're getting absorbed therefore you're getting black bands this particular black band is specific for this particular gemstone change the gemstone your bands are going to move drastically you're going to have different patterns different interaction results for different stones so you're able to identify a stone by just placing it in front of a spectroscope studying the different bands or the different absorbances that are happening and you're able to identify the gem a simple non-invasive test for a gem you can replace the gem to a glass piece you can replace the gem to a stone a valuable stone a diamond you you have multiple different options of working on your spectroscope this is a simple model of a spectroscope we're going to see different uh, uh, other modifications also one more application of a simple handheld spectroscope i just wanted to explain this is another picture of the previous slide what's happening with the previous slide so a spectroscope under white light you're going to get a continuous spectrum you place your test sample in the middle you're going to get a absorption spectrum so absorption bands are formed based on the absorption bands you can identify what this test sample is provided it is already documented if you know what this band stands for then you know what this test sample uh, contains that is the idea of spectroscopy so we use this in forensic biology also so let me just quote one more example so supposing we have a blood sample or a sample which is suspected to be blood okay so a, a, a pink color or a red color stain in a crime scene you want to identify whether it's blood a simple test to do can be a spectroscopy test so take the blood sample uh, add 5% uh, sodium hydroxide and dextrose leave it for four hours in room temperature you're basically breaking down the hemoglobin in alkaline medium break down the hemoglobin and view through a stereo uh, sorry a spectroscope view through view that solution through a spectroscope you're going to get its absorption uh, spectrum and you're able to see the yellow light is getting absorbed because the hemoglobin is broken if the hemoglobin is broken it means that it is blood so you will be able to see two distinct black bands around 540 nanometers which is a confirmatory test that this sample contains blood okay so simple one step ahead we're moving to understand how spectroscopes work it can work in a case of gemology in a case of physics like a glass piece or a soil piece it can also work in biology where you're studying a biological medium like blood by breaking down the hemoglobin and studying the interaction under white light now this is not the only spectroscope that is available that is uh, your handle spectroscope using white light we have variations we remove the white light from the picture and we change or modify the electromagnetic radiation that we are using so we can use uv light It'll, you will get a uv spectroscopy uh, technique you can use infrared light infrared spectroscopy you can use x-rays x-ray spectrometry can be performed you can use atomic specific lights it's not nuclear radiation here we are talking about the atomic level of a sample so supposing you are looking for a particular metal 
uh, in a particular sample. So you can use that metals uh, rays, specific rays of that metal to strike your sample. And based on how much is absorbed and how much is emitted, we can either carry out atomic absorption spectrometry or absorption, sorry, uh, atomic emission spectrometry. We also have mass spectrometry. We will be learning about these different techniques in our chapter here. So I'm just trying to explain to you how spectroscopy works. It's the interact, it's the study of the interaction of electromagnetic radiation when it falls on matter. So we build on that and we study the matter or identify the matter based on the interaction that we are getting in forensic science using different electromagnetic radiations like your UV, IR and X-rays and atomic and even mass spectrometry. We'll be learning about uh, these different techniques in our uh, unit 3 of TMFS.